Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start, at least, on my review of Sisterhood of Dune by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. So this follows the origin of the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood, although it covers a lot of other stuff as well. Uh, it's book one in the Schools of Dune trilogy, which is the most recent Dune trilogy. Um, after book one, two, and three in this, the only other thing I haven't read will be uh, Road to Dune, which is more of a biography of uh, Frank Herbert, from what I understand, although I think there's also an unpublished novella in there. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out my tabs and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. At the time of filming this, I am about 140, oh no, a bit more than that, 170 pages away from the end, so I'm about two thirds of the way through. Um, so I'm going to film what I've got now and then I will update you tomorrow. Dane reads. It is 83 years after the last of the thinking machines were destroyed in the Battle of Corrin, after Fakon Butler took the name of Carino and established himself as the first emperor of a new imperium. Great changes are brewing that will shape and twist all of humankind. The war hero Vorian Atreides has turned his back on politics and Seleucus Secundus. The descendants of Abulard Harkonnen, Griffin and Valia have sworn vengeance against Vor, blaming him for the downfall of their fortunes. Raquel Alberto Anarol has formed the Bene Gesserit school on the jungle planet Rossak as the first Reverend Mother. The descendants of Aurelius Venport and Norma Senva have built Venport Holdings, using mutated, spice-saturated navigators who fly precursors of Highliners. Gilbertus Albans, the ward of the hated robot Erasmus, is teaching humans to become Mentats and hiding an unbelievable secret. The Butlerian movement, rapidly opposed to all forms of dangerous technology, is led by Manford Torondo and his devoted swordmaster, Anari Idaho. And it is this group, so many decades after the defeat of the Thinking Machines, which begins to sweep across the known universe in mobs, millions strong, destroying everything in its path. All of these factions and individuals will become enmeshed in the contest between reason and faith. Everyone will be forced to choose sides in the inevitable crusade that could destroy humankind forever. One of the things I always love in the Dune books is when um, we talk about the way that water is treated by the Fremen and how it's considered on Arrakis, and we get this little line here which I enjoyed. Joseph raised his thick eyebrows. He needs to be encouraged then. He turned to his captive who perspired heavily, wasting water as the desert people would think of it. And we get a burned corpse, and I just thought this was cool. A nice little bit of gore here. I do like gore. As the burned corpse was taken down, some of the reddened meat on the shoulders and torso slipped off the bone, and the guards recoiled with exclamations of disgust. One of the men brought Salvador the placard, and he squinted to read the small print on the back. The lynch mob felt they needed to explain that the victim's body had been mutilated in precisely the same way that the thinking machines had done to Serena Butler, their justification for a horrendous act. So all of the Dune books have little quotes at the starts of the chapters, and I quite uh, often highlight those because I think a lot of them are really good. They tend to set the scene um, in a really cool way, but also do some great world building. So here we have uh, Vorian Atreides from the Legacy Journal's Kepler period. Slavery can take many forms. Some are overt, while others are discreet. All are reprehensible. And I thought this was interesting. This is from uh, the Reverend Mother of the Bene Gesserit. She says, Women have always been the driving force behind society, whether or not men wear the mantles of leadership. We have the innate genetic power to create, and even though the Imperium is still stumbling in its first steps, if we in the Sisterhood can extend our influence, sending out even more of our well-trained sisters as advisors, confidants, or wives, then we can provide a more stable foundation for the great houses of the Landsrad League. This is a quote here from Roderick Carino from a private memo to the Emperor. History is best left in the past so that legends do not interfere with our daily lives. And this is from Manford Torondo, addressed to the Butlerians on Lambdas. Theories change as new data comes to light. Facts, however, do not change, nor do my principles. That is why I'm suspicious of theories of any kind. Joseph Venport, internal Venhold memo, he said, I'm not afraid to use any weapon at my disposal, and information can be the deadliest weapon of all. I thought this was cool as well. Again, another uh, example of how water is considered on Arrakis. He moved to a corner table and sipped a single glass of potent spice beer, but the bitter cinnamon drug rushed directly to his head, and he ordered a glass of water instead which cost twice as much as the thick beer did. Bear in mind, spice isn't cheap. And then here's a quote from Vorian Atreides' private journals, Kepler period. A hunt will always be successful, provided one is willing to redefine the goals as needed. So quote here from Zen Sunny Warning. Those who nourish themselves with hatred seldom realize they are starving. And somebody's been um, like bound and had a cover put over their face. And we get, um, when Griffin returned to fuzzy awareness, he found himself propped up in a chair, his wrists still bound behind his back. Someone yanked the hood from his head and he felt as if light and fresh air had been splashed in his face like a bucket of icy water. No one would waste water on Arrakis, he thought and he realised he was still drugged, possibly delirious. Quote here from Vorian Atreides' private journals from the Arrakis period. 
Anger, desperation, vengeance, regret, forgiveness. It is difficult to sum up one's life in a single word. And a quote here from Manford Torundo, The Only Path. He who is willing to use an evil tool is himself evil. There are no exceptions. I think sometimes our politicians need to remember that. Then we have another quote from Manfred Torondo, The Only Path. Computers are seductive and will employ all of their wiles to bring us down. Obviously there's the uh, anti-technology movement going on in this. And that's about all I have to share with you from Sisterhood of June. Overall, I thought it was okay. I gave it like a 3.5 out of 5. I'm glad that there was a, quite a nice focus on Vorian Atreides because I find him to be an interesting character. Way more interesting than Paul Atreides was. Um, and also it didn't over focus on the sisterhood which was good because that could have got quite boring quite quickly. It was like a decent introduction to this new trilogy and I'm looking forward to the re remaining two books. And then after that I only have The Road to June to read and I will have finished reading all of the June books. I mean obviously I enjoy them enough to have read about 14 books of this sort of width and whatnot so far. So yeah if you've got this far in the series keep reading. So there we have it, that's what I made of Sisterhood of June by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.